grab a chip? Want a chip? You know I can't grab your goose chips. Go away. Spoon. Spacehead. Boom. Okay, well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Salt Shaker FGC podcast. And here I have a prodigy, uh, ghost chips. How are you, man? I'm doing all good. That's no, sweet. And I should say that, you know, this kid is not only a prodigy, but he's also well mannered and very respected um, in our community. And for a dirty bison, man, you know, that's that's pretty rare. Oh, man, I'm not a prodigy no more. <laughs> what do you mean it's you're. Over. What do you mean it's not a pro? What do you mean you're not a prodigy anymore? Turned eighteen, it's over. Oh, what you what you've been corrupted now. <laughs> the gimmick is no, just the gimmick is gone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a gimmick! God, uh, look at this kid. Yeah, look at this young man. Yeah, just doesn't have the same ring, you know. <laughs> doesn't have the same ring. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so yeah, just give us a brief rundown about yourself, Ghost Chips. You know what you're all about, and you know who you are in the scene. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, my name is Regan. Uh, most people have known me as Ghost Chips. Uh, I play a game called Street Fighter Five uh, fairly well. Uh, I've travelled to Australia numerous times for it, uh, and recently America three times. Yeah. Uh, I've won a lot, quite a few New Zealand tournaments. Uh, done quite well over in Australia, and um, have made a pretty good mark for myself in my recent American tournament placings with Combo Breaker and Capcom Cup. Mm. I mean, it's it's fair to say that you win them all over here in New Zealand, but it's a rare case because I think a lot of players make a villain out of a winner because they never lose, but everyone seems to levitate to you as a player and your story. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, I think... A lot of people probably want to see a change of pace, but I think uh, I, I keep a I keep a pretty level head, so it it's is nothing outside of that factor of me winning heaps that makes people want to root against me. I think aside from a character, of course, there are a couple of people out there that aren't big fans of uh old Bison. Yeah. They jump on the uh, hashtag fuck bison trainer. Yeah. <laughs> so when you say a change of pace, do you mean that you're wanting the next upstart to kind of challenge you? Are you wanting someone new to kind of rattle up the competition? Uh huh. That would be kind of cool. I never really thought about it like that. No, just when I mean like change of pace, I mean like just see someone other than me kind of take the crown. Well, if you had to pick someone, who would that be? Uh, I would say part of me for legacy reasons wants to say Waza. I'd like to see Waza come back and yeah. have a good shot. Um, for based on probability, it'll most likely be Sky or Zazob. Yeah. Um, but based off of work ethic and determination, I'd probably say Reno. Reno, yeah, I know a lot of people of cities on the come up. So, like, do you have a lot of, um, do you get much practice or games with players like Sky and Zazob, or do you only meet them in tournament to, to have games? I pretty much only play them in tournament, as, as weird as that is. Like, um, online, I'm not the most active person, and even when, even when I'm online, I spend most of my time messing around with my side characters with Dio. Oh, yeah, too rare to live, too rare to die, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, actually, it's it's probably fair to mention. Um, big shout out to Big Chopper, and uh, his former company Zenshin, because I know he really looked after you during those early years of of Street Fighter Five. Can you can you kind of describe what that period was like for you? Because he was trying to put in a lot of work to get you, prom- you know, doing a lot of promotion work for you. Yeah, Zenshin was pretty pretty good because like he had um, money doing the graphics, and money is a really 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 good graphic designer. Um, the jerseys were well designed. Um, the roster was good. Um, the graphic, uh, like the stream setups were all there. Um, the results we had were doing really well at the time. Like I remember Garden of Might, I came like first, Ting came third, Isaac came second, 
uh, in Marvel. So we had like all these top three placings. Um, but I guess the the funding and support from even just the New Zealand government and other companies just wasn't there at the time. And I think Chop Josh might have had Chopper might have had I think a change in um, change in jobs at the time. Yeah. And so uh, it was it was nice getting that kind of taste for um, for esports in general. I think because that was the first time I had to do an interview at all it was like after Southern Cross Up 2017 after I had like just one. And looking back on it, it's it's crazy to see how awkward I am when it comes to talk when it, or how awkward I was when it was when it came to talking in front of a camera. Yeah, I uh, could never keep still, which to which to this day I I, I always like to move side to side. But um, but I have to like, tell myself not to. Yeah, but I mean to your credit, back then like esports was still kind of fresh for our scene. A lot of us didn't really know how to to act or react, you know, naturally without any kind of like influence or. Um, yeah, it, it was it was kind of hard, like how to react to esports at that time. Mm. It was it's it's like something that doesn't. Uh, FGC esports in a country like New Zealand just yeah. wasn't that prominent. There wasn't many teams. I mean, we had Mighty Ape, and uh, Mason managed to get his fair share of uh, sponsorships himself. Yeah, but outside of that, there wasn't you know that kind of team-based approach with, like, marketing and, um, marketing and social media use involved. Yeah. Well, you, funny, funny enough, you mentioned Garden of Might because I remember meeting, now I hope I get this right, it was your uncle, was it? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, Oh, yeah. My, my dad's uncle. Your dad's uncle, yeah, and it was really good to talk to him about, you know, the kind of you know, man, you were becoming, and also what you mean to this community in terms of the fighting game scene future for New Zealand. Um, was that the first time a fam? Was that the first time a family member had seen you play? Uh, I say the first time. I mean, I, I'd say like competition because obviously I've played my dad in Street Fighter before, but um, I say first time he watched me play was probably uh, Red Zone Rumble Two. He, when Grand Finals was starting, he, my dad and um, his auntie, or my auntie, I call her my auntie, uh, they snuck into the venue to watch me without me knowing. Ooh. And so when I turned around, no, I won. This was like my first major, like ever. Oh, sweet. I read Zone Rumble too. I still have um, the trophy uh, next to me uh, in the center. And, um, yeah, I turned around and it was like real cool to see them back there. Mm. Uh, he wants to get back into it, but he's real busy with um, the car grooming. It's yeah. kind of taking off a lot. Yeah. But um, he gets the general idea of what's happening, and having a player to support makes it more exciting. Mm. I, I me. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you won last year's nationals, Southern Cross Up twenty nineteen, and that's a huge accomplishment. And I don't think a lot of people have realized that you've won every major in Auckland we've had for Street Fighter V. So you're going to try unify the trophies this year. You're going to go for Southern Cross Up 2020. How much, how much does that mean to you in terms of being the undisputed Street Fighter V champion for the Auckland region? Ah. Uh... I don't know. I I feel like I feel like three was a nice was a nice number. Um, for because I, I I know like Mason Mason always has the joke that he always wants me to win. So by the end of the game's life cycle, uh, him and I will be the only national champions for the game. Yeah. Um. But I feel like this year for Street Fighter, I kind of want to put my focus onto, um the intel qualifier yeah so i want to uh after the qualifier we're going to have on the 21st i want to work more closely with jambo and whoever manages to win the qualifier yeah i noticed that you put that tweet out there that you're looking for the third member 
Yeah. So, we, oh, you go, man. I we had we had like a couple of people in mind, um, and it was it was real hard to pick a a clear cut winner, um, mostly because Dio, uh, only showed up to like one tournament last year, so mm. yeah, <laughs> he kind of threw everything out of proportion, um, and availability and all that we have to like plan it properly, so um, we just thought it would be much more fair if we just throw everything to one tournament and whoever wins will probably be happy with anyway yeah well what's the lineup looking like is it like who who's who's yeah who have you got to to take this thing uh at the moment strongest team right now is looking to be somniac rof and travis styles oh okay yeah, they're they're like not playing around. Yeah, man, that's playing. that's not that's not a joke team, man. That's the real deal. Because I was thinking like maybe Son would do uh, a dark sided team, and then Order would maybe pick up one more player to round it out to three, and then BK would probably do a genuine gaming team. But nah, they're just going right for the gold. Okay. And uh, even though it's obviously a very very strong team. I think once Jambo and I and our third have trained for the Intel thing, I'm pretty confident we're going to win. Yeah. No, fair enough, dude. Um, but in, in saying that, I'm, I'm like <laughs> always confident that I'm going to win and sometimes I lose. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, because for Southern Cross Up 2019, we didn't know it at the time. Well, most of us at that time didn't know but you had just been picked up by Shadownet, which was fairly new. A lot of people didn't know about it. How did that come to fruition? Uh, um, so I met uh, Ian and Frost uh, at a Rambats. They just rocked up to come talk to me and uh, Rambo. And um, they had this idea. They wanted to go big. Or they were thinking big. They had plans to, in terms of marketing, uh, they wanted to do uh, events, as well as obviously send uh, me and Rambo overseas, and they had the, had the goal of growing continuously year after year. Yeah. And um, me being uh, a free agent at the time, uh, I felt, yeah, this, this deal is yeah, decent. Yeah. Um, like I'll take it. Yeah. And you had an edge because I would say a lot of the players don't have a good mental grasp on what they get themselves into with esports and and, you know, obligations within the contracts and stuff. But you've you you were pretty level headed when I talked to you about it. Like you seem to know exactly what you're looking for, but what to look out for as well. Mm. I'm I'm always looking for, because I I I do, I do the social media stuff and all that, but it's not really my forte. I wouldn't call it something that I'm strong at. Um, so I always first thing I always look out for is how much travel can I get out of the base contract. Um, and after that, I kind of try and scope out if there's any. You know, catch twenty twos or traps that I might fall into. Yeah. Um. But also, now that I think about it, like Ian was actually there at Southern Cross Up. Like, you actually had a. There was actually someone that was doing recording as well for him. And at first, I didn't know who this guy was. I don't know what they were doing. Um. But I saw you with him like later on during the Saturday, I think. Yeah. 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 He, that was like a. They were doing like a promo video or something, weren't they? Like, like mm. pre promo video. But this was when no one knew what like Shadownet was. Like, we didn't even know about it till after the event. If I had to put a reasoning on it, I would say it's kind of it's more of a prototype for what's to come. Yeah. If I had to put it that way, it was 
a test to try and see how much probably engagement a vid video is might get. Um, and then he's so that was done through YouTube and um, other media have we've tried through Twitter, other through Instagram, uh, TikTok, which I'd rather not go into. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as I'm not a big fan of TikTok. Um, but I mean, they chose the right event to 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 gauge like the interest of the fighting game scene like coming to Auckland's biggest you know major event like I'm sure it must have been must have been a good realization like oh like this is like this is serious you know like this is you know and what a player to pick as well you know yourself yeah if you're gonna highlight an event in New Zealand it might as well be like, it might as well be the Nationals yeah so definitely a good choice an event yeah um, what was that grand final like um in at southern cross up like for street fighter were you going in there like with any nerves or any you know doubts about oh i can't get out, you know i won't be able to get out of this thing first like were you nervous at all not really i knew i was gonna play well but i wasn't expecting to play as well as i did yeah i mean I was, like i i pretty much didn't miss any of my hit confirms with stand fierce uh, my anti airs were on point. I wasn't really getting clipped by any EX demon flips. And most of my interrupts were hitting. And a lot of my uh, anti shimmy reads were connecting. So I was landing a lot of crush counters. Yeah. Everything kind of just fell, fell into place. More so than I was expecting it to. Uh, which is really unlucky for Sky because he was playing really well as well. Yeah. But I just happened to. The flow, the flow was more on my my side, especially because I have I was coming in with heaps of momentum. Yeah. Well, I I can definitely tell you that one thing that's really amused me about the Street Fighter scene is your infamous rivalry with the infamous yeah <laughs> sorry the rivalry you've had with Zazob throughout this uh, period. The special rapport that you have, you know, were were there ever was there ever were, were there ever times that you know. You were just like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm over this rivalry. Or have you kind of enjoyed it? You know, have you enjoyed the rivalry you've had with him? Yeah, of course. I feel that's part of the one of the main things that pushed me to be the player that I am. Because before there was Combo Breaker, before there was Capcom Cup, it was I gotta do my best to beat Zazob. That was the that was the end. That was the end goal at the time yeah because if i want to be the best i have to beat zaza and uh <clears throat> he used to he used to body me constantly throughout my first year in 2016 and i got really close at the end of christmas damage at seven when i was making this losers bracket tier and beating everyone three two and then I lost in grand finals after resetting 3-2 and losing 3-2. That was kind of what kicked it off. Ah, I um, see. And then we didn't get to play again. I played at Rambats and I started to win Rambats quite consistently. And so heading into my first... My second major for the year after I'd started winning Rambats. But my first major after winning Rambats. Uh, which was Red Dead Rumble 2. And... Uh, Jamie went up two games in winners finals and I somehow managed to pull it back to 3-2 and I feel he kind of cracked and due to that and I managed to take out grand finals to win my first ever major. Uh, Jamie at the time had already won Christmas Damager and Ping Zero so it was for a period of time yeah Jamie I'd say during this time Jamie was the best player in New Zealand. Yeah. But when you started to when you started to get the edge over him and you actually started to win consistently at majors and rambats, it's a different time now because we all love you. But back then, like, was there ever a, a like a ghost chips hater movement? You know, like, oh, this this kid, you know, he's he's barely eighteen and he's winning all the time. Uh, not a hater movement. The most amount of hate I'm ever garnered was probably when I did the Red Bull Committee interview. Uh, when <laughs> basically I was just pushed out to the public. Yeah. 
<laughs> and open for criticism. Which I thought was pretty funny. I find criticism more funny than I do uh, anything else, really. Yeah. Especially from people that aren't too familiar with me or what I do. Okay. Just kind of throw out insults. And, and to me, to me, I find that really funny. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, because I mean, uh, like, you're the kind of player that can that can laugh at the very insults that are thrown upon him. You know, like, the, for example, the, the fuck bison thing. And I listened to your previous interview with the Beast on the Beast pod, uh, the Beast Dance podcast about, you know, like, if you can't, you know, just because, you, you know, like, you don't, you can't deal with a certain character and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, fuck, fuck that character. Um, I, I love, I love, I love that mentality you have, you know, it's like even on, even on a weak matchup, you should be able to, you should be able to deal with it or just, you know, get get better at learning the matchup yeah i always i always believe that um everyone has access to the same characters so there's not too much there's there's not much to gain by complaining about another character mm. what made uh, well what made you what was it about bison like why him as your main uh the actual reason was justin wong was winning in the beta with bison so i picked him up on day one well not day one actually i got the game like a week late um and he ended up being the worst character in the game <laughs> although on release he was god tier because everyone thought dash heavy kick was like the greatest thing in the world yeah um which it wasn't uh it's like 20 something frame dash plus a nine frame normal that's half a second like, come on, man. <laughs> Even with eight frames, like, come on. Yeah. Did you can block a snake edge, you can not get crushed counted. Yeah, it's that... not even like a mix up. Yeah, I, I hear your claim. I mean, were you but, were you playing like any secondary characters at the time, or was it purely Bison? Oh, I really wanted to play Fang. Fang. <clears throat> so okay. the idea was that I was I'd pl- I play Bison for a bit, then try Fang, um, and then I switched away from Fang because I thought Fang was too trash. <laughs> without realizing that I was going to an even worse character. Yeah. Um, but in the long run, it worked out anyway, because Bison got buffed, Fung got buffed, but not enough. So can you can you talk about the journey of Bison throughout the seasons? Like you said, he was pretty ass when he when he came, you know, with the game released. But what what's been the gradual change? Been has he? Yeah, what's the change been like for Bison throughout the seasons? Uh, so season one, he had no conversion off of heavy flame, so flame knockdowns weren't really. They were good, but they weren't what they are right now. Um. His he didn't have a three frame, so and most of his pressure is plus one. Aside from his heavy kick, it's basically the only button that doesn't have plus one pressure. It's plus three. Uh, the only thing that season one Bison does better than anything else is his EX reverse, you can pull it backwards. So you have full control of its movement. And that's about it. Uh, so... Although the problem came with the other characters, because V reversals on most characters gave knockdowns, and most of Bison's buttons could be V reversal. So down foot heavy punch, stand heavy punch, uh, scissor blast, and EX flame. Although that's less known. So... Especially characters like Mika, who'd get a plus two situation off her V reversal. So she could just V reversal any button he does and go into the mix, which was real, real, real scary. I have no idea how any Bison player managed to beat Mika. Although I don't think it happened, aside from day one, because obviously Knuckle 2 kind of took over. Season two gave him a three frame, uh, and he managed, he got the flame conversion into blast. As well as stand jab into blast. Oh, sorry, not stand jab. Stand like kick into blast. So that was the real god tier panic, panic button. Um, damage was the same. Just the three frame changed everything. Yeah. And in season three, he got V trigger two. Yeah. Which was his second biggest buff, in my opinion. Now that's the now forgive me that's the uh the the bomb right the psycho bomb, yeah that's the psycho crusher. Uh, that's the one that Kyoki likes the yeah. 
that's probably the one that takes him furthest in competitive viability, I think. B trigger one is nice for end of round conversions and stray hit conversions, but having the mix, especially with a character that's constantly plus, giving him a command grab was a big mistake. And giving him plus two after the command grab hits, that's also a big mistake. But they're running with it. <laughs> uh, also at the time, they hadn't nerfed V-Trigger activation scaling and crush counter scaling in 3.0. They added that in 3.5. So 3.0 Bison, in my opinion, is the strongest because crush counters and VT cancels did more damage. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. Uh, season 3.5, they took it away. Season 4, uh, I don't know. I don't know what they added in Season 4. I can't remember. And Season 5, they weakened his Heavy Punch and Dalcourt Heavy Punch slightly. And that's about it. That's Bison's journey. And you're still... 1-3 frame and 1-3 trigger. 1-3 frame, 1 free trigger. And overall, you're kind of, like, you're bearing with this, this, this new, this, this current bison now yeah it's 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 a blessing and a curse to <coughs> sorry no you're good have a character that never changes because it's always boring when the new season comes out and nothing happens yeah but it's also it's, it's also a blessing because i don't have to learn anything new concerning my own character yeah yeah well yeah, yeah i was just gonna say that i mean at least you don't have to figure out what's changed it's like you know your character's still kind of in the middle well, if you could, what 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 could they give Bison in this current season to kind of wrap up his Street Fighter Five presence? Because I think you know from what you've said and from what a lot of people have said that this is practically the end of the road for Street Fighter Five, the final year. Could they give Bison? Hmm. I would say take away EX is a hard knockdown. As the main nerf, okay. and make the startup on EX frame, uh, EX frame, EX flame faster, and the startup on light frame flame faster, and that would be my perfect bison. Okay. The reasoning being, I could anti Akuma better with light flame. As well as EX Flame. Yeah. But uh, EX Scissor being his panic move, giving him hard knockdown Oki is kind of stupid. Okay. It also take away from the memes of... I have one bar and don't know what to do. So he does EX Scissor. So is Akuma a bad matchup for Bison? What are Bison's worst matchups? <clears throat> I would say Ibuki now. Bison had the best counter to her V-Skill 1, but now that V-Skill 2 is the go-to, uh, it's a lot more annoying not being able to bait it out and getting a full fierce combo punish on it. Uh, I'd say Kami. Kami is still very hard. She can EX arrow through uh, most of his fierce strings, and in general dive kicks are just hard to deal with. Uh, Colleen. Um, <laughs> These are all Zazob characters. Yeah, <laughs> but Jamie, Jamie knows what he's doing. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, he knows what he's up to. Yeah. Um, not so much my opinion, but just a general Bison consensus. Yeah. Uh, especially uh with Toy, considering he plays with Neon so much. <laughs> and Neon basically makes every Bison player hate the Colleen matchup. <laughs> Me included to a degree, even though I've only played him a couple times on a real awkward PC setup. I was hoping to get some proper games. Yeah. And at some point, but maybe when I go back to America this year. Who else is um in Australia? Who are the bison? Zomniax. Uh, so- Zomniax is is a bison player. Is there anyone else? Uh, I'd say at the upper echelon, probably not. Only ones that I could really think of is Ritu from Sydney. Yeah. But he's more of like a... He, he pops in every now and then. And it's mostly because of his... Uh, 
mostly because of this whole not showing up thing that makes him harder to fight because he just pops in once and you don't have there's not much about him you don't play him regularly to download him yeah yeah no, i get he you just comes in for the one major and then bounces yeah so what are so, you so like sorry man so just what are your thoughts on this final this supposed final year of street fighter 5 and um like where the game sits as a whole and with seth being the final character uh, i think the game's in a good place i i think it kind of caters to to the broadest range of people now most characters are viable to be played at a decent level and i think for most people that's enough yeah so i think people that want to play seth they can play seth people that want to play as much as i hate to say it but people that want to play jerry can play jerry <laughs> well uh, hey wells are just started wells are just started mucking around with judy so i mean i know i, I told him he's making a grave mistake at the character select screen because she's competitively she's not a good choice but honestly it's the game's last year <clears throat> and she's even though she's low in the tier list she's still a decent character so if you want to make her work by all means because not everyone out here is aiming to be you know capcom cup champion but you're saying it's gonna with jury it's a lot more work yeah if, you're, if your goal is to be that that good then you know, I'll pray for you. <laughs> I'll pray for you. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Maximilian Dude made that interesting comment about Seth in that he would be the final character because the developers wouldn't keep releasing other characters because then Seth would have to be, you know, altered in that way. So it makes sense that he's the final character to wrap up this this Street Fighter V era. What, do, what are your thoughts on Seth, like, as a character, like, his tools and everything? Or her tools and everything. I think Seth's tools are pretty good. Uh, target combo is very decent. Forward medium punch, very, very strong. Uh, Seth probably has the best... While in V-Trigger, has the best low forward. Uh, just straight low forward combo. Uh, his tools could be a little bit further reaching like just general neutral buttons like crouch medium punch could go a little bit further i think uh same for crouch no not crouch medium kick i'll say crouch medium punch um i think feature 2 is cool in that it gives seth more freedom while v trigger 1 is the clear go-to for people that just want to pick pick them up just just to mess around yeah well, not even just to mess around, just just to get a quick hands-on feel without having to go too deep. Uh, spammable moves, like punches, the Jojo punches, for people that are at a real casual level. And the concept of stealing people's moves, that... That's actually I, really cool. I like that. The, the length that combos can go on for is really, really cool. And... I, the idea that this, the suck itself is a hard knockdown that gives you plus 3 on dash like that in and of itself is strong because <clears throat> if they try and back dash you get a midi, midi 3 frame which goes into Seth's stand medium punch target combo which is Seth's main combo out <clears throat> so Seth I feel is a pretty complete character um Animations are pretty decent uh, in comparison to what they've released with season three, or at least early in season three. Early in season three, uh, very fluid, uh, good voice acting. I I dig Seth as a character. Yeah. Well, like, I don't know if you care much about the story, but Seth being a female, like being a doll, like being embedded in a doll, you know, brain in a doll. What do you th like? I don't know. Were you one of those people that were like, "Oh my God, Seth, a doll, like a like in the body of a doll"? I I always figured Seth would come back, but 
I, I kind of wanted them to do something more with the whole idea of 26 bodies that they had going on. Because like you had Abel and Seth and then they had to try and storm the base, Ryu and them, and they were like destroying Seth clones. So part of me was hoping that one of them was, that the doll itself was one of those 26 Seth clones, but I don't know how far they're going to run with that. Um, which was pretty cool. Is there anyone uh, that's um like really investing time in Seth in our scene at the moment? In our scene, I think maybe Orcsboro. That's probably about it. But he's probably going to Yurian from what I heard. Yeah. So not really. Even overseas, I haven't heard of many people going harder on Seth besides Denesis. Yeah. Who's turning his back on the Shadowloo. <laughs> and um, now that, you know, with Seth being out and like Street Fighter Five getting the attention, like as it should do, um, and the attention to the net code as well, um, I mean, it's taken four plus, you know, five years and the developers are finally focusing on the net code. Do you have anything to, to say or comment in regards to that? I don't know, I never felt the netcode was as trash as people made it out to be. Uh, I just thought Australia had trash net. <laughs> they, they still do. <laughs> like, <laughs> netcode is not going to fix it. Yeah. They can make the netcode as good as possible, but <laughs> if you're still working with <laughs> two cans and a wire... Wow. It's just not working. Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> so I never... And online I always took with a grain of salt. I mostly played it uh, for, again, to mess around with Dio. And even then, our connection is pretty decent. If we wanted to play seriously, we could. Uh, there are a couple players that I don't play with online because I know their connection is trash. I can't name them right now because I can't think of them right now. But um, just by selectively choosing who I, who I want to play and who I don't want to play based on netcode. Like, I can always just play them offline. Yeah. More so when I visit Australia. Because more likely than not, they're Australian. Um, yeah. Although I, I can understand it being a bigger problem for America because those guys are ranked monsters. Yeah. And, and the connections can go so far and wide because it's just a huge country with many district, you know, many regions. Yeah. Because it's always possible to just get connected to a guy on the other side of the country. Which is probably about the same distance as New Zealand to Perth, maybe a little bit further. Don't mm. quote me on that. My geography is not the strongest. <laughs> so I can understand for America, Asian internet's pretty god tier. Like Shen's been playing with Travis Styles, or has been playing with Travis Styles for a while. Um. So yeah, Nick Code. I always felt was a bit of a meme and you could tell who was trash at the game based on who was just replying to everything asking to fix the netcode yeah I just I could never really understand when like you'd pop into an online game you waited for five minutes you couldn't get connected with anyone and then all of a sudden you do and then they're literally like on the other side of the world ah oh, yeah Sure. I never. I don't. I don't often consider like lower level accounts, or not lower level, but lower LP accounts. Yeah. Because for me, I'm always playing the same group of people, even at my even in rank. I only ever get match made with say, twenty people maximum at different times. Yeah. If I and that's if I do choose to play rank, I haven't played rank in a while. Well, how how often do you run into like the Australian boys online? Uh, I say Ross the hardest to catch online. Because he basically never plays. Uh, Somniac is very easy to catch. Uh, Rups is very easy to catch. Sayo, pretty easy to catch. Uh, Travis, I have to ask for games because we can never match make and ranked, pretty much. Just because distance, too far. Uh, yeah. And those are pretty much the only people that I consistently match make with. Okay. Well, when you play the Australian guys, um, 
like how how do you do with the like have you been to australia and competed over the, like have you ever competed in australia yes yeah i've played in two bands my first one i did better in i, I feel my second one i kind of choked a little bit uh i've played at a couple locals some of which i went random selecting uh other which others i tried in because they were for pasta evo what um, can i ask why why do you think you choked in the second bam um i was on so i was about to beat uh unsung he's a zeku player four rounds straight and i kind of let him claw it back when i really shouldn't have but you know it's more of a what if situation in reality if i don't win then i don't deserve to win yeah um and then i i made it out in loser side and then i played duck and i had him on match point i think twice and kind of let it slip both times but duck at the time was training really really hard whereas i was kind of laxing it a bit after winning war yeah so definite props to him yeah well actually it's fair to mention because you know you're a student as well and you know, you're one of those few cases where you try to balance your schoolwork with your gaming life as well. You know, if school's slipping up, you tend to pick up the slack. Have you found that? Have you found that struggle even more hard to maintain this year? Uh, not so far. But to be honest, I've have I've been kind of neglecting Street Fighter a little bit uh, in favor of my studies. Uh, in like my early early days. Uh, I used to do really, 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 really well on my schoolwork, and with Street Fighter, I kind of balanced it out a bit more. <clears throat> like, I still do really well, but not to the level that I I was used to. Yeah. Because um, I had this goal to be, like, the best player in, in the country, and now, I guess it's the world, it's my next goal, is to be the best player in the world. Um. But now that I'm kind of heading into this newer stage and my results are more closely linked with what kind of job I'll have, I feel more of a pressure to perform. Yeah. But not even a pressure, I feel more of a determination to perform in my studies, kind of like I used to when I was much younger. Yeah. What do you, Can I ask what you're studying at the moment? At the moment, I'm studying engineering. Ah, nice. At the University of Auckland. Has that has that been something you've always been passionate about, or did you just kind of, yeah? How, how have you always been interested in engineering? Uh, I was always pretty good at maths. Uh, uh, university subjects I wasn't very familiar with, because not many of my family, uh, none of my initial family, have gone to uni. So I would always have to explain things in terms of school subjects. So it's like, I'm good at this subject. This is a career that's more linked with the subject. I'll kind of move here. So at one point I was like, yeah, I'll do law. And then my math started picking up. It's like, oh yeah, I'll do engineering. And I guess towards the end of it, it was, <laughs> now I'm doing engineering. <laughs> do you um Do you feel the need to succeed more because you're because you come from a family that has never as you said achieved that kind of level of level of experience in graduation uh, yeah to some degree but it's something that my dad's always wanted for me he's always wanted me to have more options in life so me by doing well like better in my education i can open more doors but I feel my experience with the FGC has helped me uh, associate with people much older than me, which I feel will help me a lot in uni. Yeah. I know a lot of people, a lot of younger people tend to stick to themselves or people that are more close, closely linked with each other. Yeah. Um, Whereas I find myself more talking with, say if I go to, I'm signing up for a club, I'm more open to speaking with the older members of the club and asking them about their experiences with uni 
and learning from them. Sort of in the same way that I treated the NZFTC and its history. Yeah. Like I would talk with uh, Pepper Saint and Waza about their times with fighting games and all that. So I, li- I like that there's a sort of translation that mm-hmm. I can bring from one area to another. Would you ever feel odd if, like, say, any of your classmates discovered who you really are? Uh, do you like to keep that? Really. Do you like to keep that side of yourself separate? No. To my closer friends, they they know. But uh, the only time that the general, like, I guess, acquaintances, is the easiest word. The only time that my acquaintances have ever <laughs> just so weird saying that uh <laughs> found out about my whole like street fighter shtick is when the the red bull kumite <laughs> interview kind of popped off yeah uh some people if i know that gaming's kind of like their thing uh some somehow it always manages to segue into it uh a couple of people recognize me for it Especially for those that are real casual at fighting games that go to ULA. They sort of know who I am and are aware of what I've done. And it's, it's always a weird feeling. Mm. Being known as the guy who plays Street Fighter really well. Well, being known as one of the one of the country's best. I mean, yeah. It's not really something you can undersell. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you mentioned... Well, I mean, you've re-mentioned the Red Bull Kumite... Could you briefly go over what that experience was? Because I think, obviously, for most of the people that attended, they kind of knew what the grand final was going to be, but it was just a matter of who wanted it more. Um, I would imagine that you felt the pressure just as much as Zazob, you know, a free trip to France and, and and meeting, you know, the likes of, you know, like Justin Wong and Gachi Kun and all those players. Um, you must have felt the pressure at that point in, in your Street Fighter career. I feel Red Bull Kumite 2018 was probably I'll say peak cockiness. It got to a point where I was pretty cocky. <laughs> um, like I was starting to do really, really well against the Australian players. Uh, I had recently taken war without dropping a game. Um, I was messing around with Tekken at the same time, trying to level up my jack when I really should have been full out on Street Fighter. But it's always in my nature to try and be a balanced player, as yeah. opposed to hard out one. I try and pick them all up at the same time. Um, similar to like schoolwork, how it all balanced out. Um, and uh, when his finals, I took a 2-0 lead, and at that point, I thought, yeah, I've pretty much got it. And then Jamie called it back three games straight. And it's it was kind of poetic justice, because at the time, this was after I had turned the tides against Jamie, because Jamie was always beating in 2016. And then through 2017, I kind of had always had the upper hand over him. And through early 2018 as well. And now when it came to the biggest prize New Zealand's ever had, he beat me in pretty much the same fashion that I started beating him. Yeah. He did a reverse sweep similar to how I beat him at Red Zone Rumble 2. And then he won the tournament 3-2 with a wake-up jab. Which is um, something that I... A clip that we joke about that's been used in numerous promotions for me. Well, not promotions, but a clip that's been used in many uh, pieces of media concerning me. Hmm. which I won with from a wake-up jab. Uh, I still got a really cool fight stick out of it, though. Jamie got a really <laughs> cool trip to France. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I feel like it was a good wake-up call. And uh, Jamie, uh, yeah, he won the biggest prize New Zealand has ever had for a fighting game. Yeah. It's, and it just kind of... It just made like, and it, it just felt so beautiful that it was the Red Bull Kumite. Like, it actually made us New Zealand feel like we were a part of something bigger, 
and I think a lot of Street Fighter guys, like yourself included, definitely like appreciated like all this work Stanley Fierce has put up up until that point. It made it all worth it. Yeah. Oh, how could I go this far without saying? Because like without a Standing Fierce, there would be no me as a Street Fighter player. I. Or, that, I think that's a lot of us, eh, man? Like, yeah, that's pretty much all of us. Yeah. Because, as as I've said previously, the online play for the game just isn't really my forte. Mm. Without a offline place to constantly train against New Zealand's best, even as one of the lower ranking players early, like early in the days, without that kind of place to come and play, there was no way I could have made it as far. Yeah. I, I do remember that period, like, Zazob had said, you know, like, from time to time that you were his biggest obstacle, and when that moment happened, it really did feel like a, as you said, a wake-up call, but then, you know, you yourself said that you were appreciative of it, because it was like, you know, like, it's, 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 it's good not to be cocky, you know, it's like, there's always the next challenge, and then when Zazob met that challenge, he in turn gave you a new one. Mm. Yeah, it was even crazier because we didn't meet at Southern Cross Up and then at Damager Cup, he eliminated me. So it was like, even though I have a really, really, really clean record against most of these players, mine and Jamie's major record is still basically 50-50. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you if it had to come down to the wire, and I'm just putting this out there for fate, if you, it had to come down to the wire where you and him meet again at a grand final, if you could give yourself advice, what would what would you tell yourself? Uh, if I'm winning, don't be too eager to anti the dive kicks, because if I have the life lead, sometimes it's just worth it, not getting hit or not risking getting hit but if i'm losing uh good luck <laughs> <laughs> and just randomly if you had to if, if let's say like it wasn't jamie if you expected someone else to make it meet you in grand final who would you say it would be uh i'll say sky just because he's so consistent at beating pretty much everyone else yeah it's really wild like mine and jamie's oh actually no i can't say that because we count early in the years and jambo and jamie are actually pretty close okay well like it's funny because like new zealand like we're a small country we love champions and we've had many examples and accolades over time you know you've got joseph parker when he was on his winning streak um yeah. you've got you know you've got the us winning the rugby world cup back in 2011 and then you've just had like taika waititi win an oscar for the screenplay um jojo rabbit um like what does it mean to you when people actually say they consider you like a new zealand champion not obviously on the same level but just when they consider you a champion in the highest regard ah uh... It'll, it'll always be weird because to me I'm just doing something that I love to do uh, well I should say two things one of them is play fighting games the other one is compete I love to compete um, but I never s I always think that the ability that I've reached in fighting games is reachable by anyone so I, I don't but I do this myself I don't really look up to players or or opponents I, see, I, I just see them as opponents so when people who are, are sort of into fighting games and they like look up to me as a champion it's like I'm not <laughs> it's like I'm not your, I'm not the champ I'm not just a champion I'm the guy you want to be <laughs> I'm but in turn, so, you know. But in turn, it must feel really good that you know, when people want to pick up the game, the name, one name only, when people ask like, who do you consider the best? Like, 
it must mean something to you that people think of you you know they vision they envision your face they think of your name ghost chips i mean you turn that meme of an ad into pr pretty much a, a fighting game icon over here yeah it's it's cool it's cool yeah it's cool that i can kind of take something kiwi and something that's quite synonymous with most new zealanders which is a street fighter uh, most people grew up with the game so I can take these two New Zealand things and combine them into one. You know, bro, you know the first year that Dave met you, he had no idea of the Ghost Chips reference, eh? Really? I think so. I forgot who I forgot who told me. Someone someone told me that Dave, for a period, didn't even know where that name came from. Oh, man. <laughs> That's because they didn't run the ad anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, didn't get the memo. It's all good. Yeah. Well, are, are there any overseas events that you want to hit up this year? Uh, I do plan on going to Combo Breaker, and I do plan on going to Evo. Those are probably the only two that I'm planning for. So I will say that I will be going to those. Uh, next tournament will definitely be War. Uh, I will hit up the Intel Challenger Series. So if we win the Oceania Qualifier, we'll be going to Poland. And then hopefully Tokyo but that's a maybe that, that round's a maybe so yeah. this year definitely uh, combo breaker and Evo I will not be attending BAM this year oh no BAM this year oh bro no BAM this year oh man um, BK Summer and Somniacs oh they'll be disappointed bro uh, they have to catch me at combo breaker Ooh. <laughs> or Evo or Evo or Evo <laughs> But, um, what's your, yeah, um, how are you preparing for Evo? Uh, Evo? Not, not really. Uh, I guess being, as long as my performance doesn't drop in New Zealand, as long as I remain confident in how I play, and how I want to play, uh, as long as I'm happy with the circumstances outside of gaming. Like I'm heading into Evo with the right mindset, then I believe I'll perform to the best of my ability. At this point, I know so much about the game that consistently playing. Like there's, there's always something that needs to be done or worked on in other areas at the moment. So I want to try and focus on those to bring that sort of balance. And if I head into Evo with that, with this balanced mindset, then I'm pretty sure I will do really well. And are you going with a Shadownet troop, or are you going with your own NZFGC troop? Uh, I'm not too sure how many New Zealanders are going to Evo. I know... I'm pretty sure it's going to be me and Rambo. I don't think... Ian, uh, Prony, and the rest of, like, management... Are you, are you coming to Evo? Uh, TBC. Yeah, I want to, but, you know, it's it's it, it's it, 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 there's a lot of planning. And I could definitely say there's a lot of planning in terms of how they want to promote you and uh, Rambo heading into Evo. Yeah, there's a lot that needs to be sussed out. So, yeah, it's a work in progress, man. Mm. So, Evo will probably the be best. the, the Australian FGC. Right, uh, more AU FGC Rambo focus. Uh, combo Breaker, definitely NZFGC focus. Because we have so many of us heading over. Hmm. What, um... Because, I mean... Could you talk about your experience at um, Combo Breaker? Because... It's it's such... A, for those who don't know, that's such an awesome tournament. 24-hour venue at a golf resort, I think. And you can just find games with anyone. Because that's one thing. Obviously, if you don't go to EVO... And if you don't know how it, it runs, you don't really know. But I didn't know that they didn't have casual setups. Yeah. That yeah, must like, be so, like, uh, oh, uh, my. Was yeah. I was, I was good fever. I, I found a room. It's all good. Yeah. They, yeah, I've been told that. It's like, you got to find the hotel rooms, man. you got to find where the setups are in the hotel rooms. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Combo Breaker was real cool. Uh, I was incredibly nervous. 
I almost lost to my first opponent, who was like a Colleen player <laughs> from somewhere in America. I think it might have been Arizona. Yeah. Uh, he took. I took the first game. He took the second game. And then I made. <laughs> thankfully, I took the last game two zero, like two rounds straight. And I was like, oh, thank God, because he was playing real well, and he got like three crush counters on me in the second game to take it. And I was getting a little bit nervous. Well, really nervous. I was getting really nervous. Uh, second match was Brian F. Uh, blew me right out the water. I only managed to take like one round. Uh, drop to losers, win four games I think, four or three games, and then have to play Brian F again. That one went pretty well. Uh, Australia Australia players were getting behind me. I uh, took the first game, pretty close. It was a pretty close game. I lost the first round, then won the next two rounds. Yeah. Uh, second game actually ended up being a draw. At that point, I thought I'd won because I thought it was one game to each, but draw games count as null on both sides, which I agree with because it, it sucks winning off a draw. Uh, and I think the crowd was really pro Brian, which I found it really weird. American players are very supportive of their pros, even in, against. Even against um, talent that they've never seen before. Yeah. They were more interested in, even though he was losing, they were more wanting to see him win over me, which I felt was really weird because I'm more used to people wanting the underdog to win, not the clear cut favorite. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I always find it, I find I do better when I'm trying to prove people wrong. So I took the third game in the set. Um, he was he was real shaken, I think, because he lost in winners against uh, Skull, which he was predicted to win against, and he had to play me like right after. So he really wasn't feeling it. Yeah. And uh, the the first game loss and the second game draw, even though he was like living by the edge of the skin of his teeth, I think that's the phrase. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Um, and I think maybe with the crowd, he he just kind of lost it, and I managed to capitalize on that. And I, as well as beating me so convincingly in winners, he probably walked in thinking, "Oh yeah, this will just be another free, you know, cleanup." He wasn't expecting me to to counterplay as well as I did. Yeah. Also, I think it is it's fair to mention that you had um. Uh, Sly Will William Slingsby over there with you recording like t- pretty much like recording your tournament run which was a great service because obviously we could only he- see- well we could only get what we were seeing you know we were only getting the info from the bracket itself um, and I don't think they were updating it regularly as well so big shout out to Sly Will as well yeah ZG was also filming my matches and putting them on Twitter for Periscope so that was that was pretty cool as well um yeah sly sly will doing media is always always turns out good content you you get nothing but the best from him eh? yeah he's only videographer i know that puts out such top quality content Mm. in esports in general like just in general most people just put together like photo montages and i always find that semi-awkward because there's so much heart and especially crowd reactions in FGC. Yeah. That just doesn't get captured in us still. Like the noise, the commentating, sometimes the noise the players make. Yeah. No, I agree. I think he just knows the scene well enough that he knows exactly what to get, what to film at what time. Like, could you imagine if he managed to capture the guy saying, yeah, Geef down in Christchurch? Oh, like how how cool would that be? It would have been rad, bro. It would have been great. It's the first year gift. <laughs> so like, like that sort of thing. Yeah. So after the combo breaker run, um, yeah, where, where were you mentally um after getting eliminated? Uh, I was very happy with how I eliminated. I lost to a player that was equally good at ad- adapting. His name. He don't. He doesn't go by the, his old name anymore. He goes by Joey FGC. Uh, very strong Mika player. 
one of the best in in the world. In the world, I'll give him in the world. Um, I managed to meet up with him at a Capcom Cup, and we played a first of three, and I lost three two. So I have something I have to work on for next time. Um, but yeah, I was real happy with, especially considering how far he went. Because after me, he beat, uh, I think he beat Luffy three uh two one, and then I think he beat uh Ryuse two one. I'm not too sure. It was a Urian player, I think. Yeah. So he went quite far after beating me. So that kind of that also gave me quite a lot of hope. Mm. And even after my traveling with Combo Breaker, Evo, and Capcom Cup, it's nice being able to look back and see that the only person that I lost without taking a game was Brian F and Winners. Yeah. He's the only guy I lost to with it where I didn't take a game. And even then, I managed to take the run back. Yeah. yeah. Fair to mention, yeah, you did go to the LCQ and Capcom Cup. And that was another move that a lot of people were like, wait, what? Ghost Chips is there? We're seeing all the photos of you with, you know, the the players that we all know. Um, but just quickly going back to Combra Breaker, what was it like being on the like being on the stream? Because you actually were facing Goichi. Like, yeah. wh- where was where was your head at that point in the in the tournament? Oh, uh, I mean, I I, I knew that I was going to be Goichi. I find that I usually perform pretty decently on stream. And, uh, especially considering Capcom Cup chat, uh, like, Twitch chat, Twitch chat sucks. Like, they're just all scrubs. <laughs> so, uh, I, I just always envisioned them thinking that it would be free for Goichi. Or I could just see them making excuses for Goichi if I was beating him. Or saying something about my character if I'm beating him. Yeah. But I know Goichi is a Dragon Ball player, so he's pretty rusty. Which means that he'll take a lot in certain, certain situations. And I was right, so after my target combo, he ticked, um, he died to a shimmy, he ate one after, uh, EX Blast, I think, and, yeah, pretty much everything was breaking out, most of my throws were hitting, because I made the shimmy so scary, uh, my comebacks were successful, like the strings that I was, my, my comeback sequences all worked, yeah. when I needed them to. Uh, he wasn't very good at catching my backdash, which I know that Rusty players aren't the best at. And when I watched the footage back, they were like, man, Goichi, uh, what, what was it? Uh, jet lag. They said he had jet lag. Oh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I found that really ridiculous because I flew a further distance to get to America. Yeah. Not only that, I arrived on the day of the tournament. Well, technically, well, I arrived at midnight, which is technically the day that I played. Was this, in, so, was this character choice um, interesting? Because he chose Chun Li. Chun, yeah. Uh, I think he chose that because I picked Bison. And Manat Bison. Uh, not the best matchup. Even if Manat is a very cheap character. Well, was a cheap character at the time. Is she fairly strong in this season right now, Chun Li? Yeah, she's very strong. She doesn't require. Uh, so when she shimmies, she had to use EX meter to get the knockdown. Or she'd often have to go for like delayed buttons to try and catch them throwing, which is which is cool. But you want the added option of being able to walk away because it's safer than being in their face pushing buttons. So being up on that stage, could you hear the crowd behind you? Could you hear the commentators? Uh, I don't think. I, oh yeah, I could hear the commentators, but I wasn't really focused. I could hear the Australians, but again, I think the American crowd, aside from St. Cola, I think I heard St. Cola. Uh, I don't know, I don't think they were that loud. I think the crowd for the center stage for Killer Instinct was louder, which kind of leads back into the whole, uh, they kind of wanted to see the favorite one, which I, I think, I don't know. I wasn't paying too much attention to the crowd. Yeah, but that's just something I noticed. I was playing Brian F, so um, I guess it kind of my trail. It's Goichi, probably less so because he's not American. But maybe that, it was more stunned than anything else. Because like, who's this kid? Yeah, oh, I shouldn't say kid because I don't think they saw me as a kid. 
no i don't think so too but even in the chat people were like well who is this kid like like who 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 did he beat to get to this point in the in the in the pools yeah they like they couldn't they didn't even know who how i got there they couldn't fathom like how how like how you even made it that far if it was that far even you know mm. it's like they didn't know what character i played yeah yeah and, and i think that's all that's always surprising when you see an unknown on the screen because they're like oh, okay what's his character where's he from you know and then obviously how does he play against you know a legend or a, a, a well-played veteran and they, they always expect they usually expect the the lesson on player to lose and lose pretty convincingly right mm. or maybe they'll get like a round a good round or sometimes a good game and then they'll just get blown up the water yeah but um, it, it's something else when you've got like james chen like literally you know going off his nut you know calling out your name and then your uh well-deserved i wouldn't even say pop off but just little fists in the air at the end yeah that was that was more like a relief that i made it out of pools less so than beating goichi mm. did you but it's now you go man it's it's so weird being known as the guy that beat goichi because afterwards i had to play mov ah, even though yeah. he, was, he was playing heron i think beating mov in street fighter is a bigger deal than beating goichi yeah but obviously it wasn't stream so there was like less Did like notori not notoriety yeah but did you know did you know you had to face him if you beat goichi yes i think i did but i was pretty confident that was going to be mob because i knew he was switching characters at the time yeah i love the tweet that capcom made because i think when you won they were like they said something like oh you know we expect a a hacker a hacker hacker war dance i just laughed i was like oh <laughs> No, that was pretty cool. That that Capcom tweet kind of. Oh no, I I like quote retweeted it saying that I I loved everyone. Which I do. I love you guys. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> that one kind of like took off. That's cool. Well, I mean, if there's anything you could say about your Combo Breaker experience, like, what would you say to convince someone to go to Combo Breaker? Uh, do it. <laughs> If you love fighting games, do it. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> yep. Oh, sweet. Obviously, man. obviously, live within your means, but if you want it. It's it's probably the most worth it experience. Yeah. That you can have. You don't need to get access to any secret hotel rooms or whatever. You don't even need to travel with anyone to have a good time, because. You know the venue is open for 24 hours yeah always meet new people playing new people i mean and because people are always like going back to their rooms because they all got they pretty much they all bring their own setups the setups were there were always free setups yeah i think yeah some people maybe credit evo too highly i mean they should but it's just a lot of people are starting to say like combo breaker is the tournament you need to go to like 24 hours as you said available setups it's 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 the it's a tournament for the gamers as sly will said mm. it's combat breaker is the place you go to to have fun evo is oh actually no i shouldn't put it like that combat breaker is the place that you go to have fun playing fighting games evo is the place that you go for an experience i like that i like the way you put it just to quickly separate it from fighting games you also jam tft now i know there's people in the scene that play oh hey i oh, know i'm mentioning it because you know like it's it's cool but um yeah so tell us this tell us about the little group that you play tft with because you guys go p get pretty heavy into it so it's like me matt lewis uh adam cubsy uh josh ox uh josh chopper uh, mia um, I feel like I'm forgetting people, and it's gonna sound really bad. Um, so it's it's like pretty much something called YFY. Uh, guess to some extent, oh nah, nah. 
To some extent, Milky. Milky sometimes joins in. But yeah, I'll say it's it's mostly me, Matt, Lewis, Adam, Josh, Josh. Josh, Josh, and Mia. I do just all play TFT. Yeah. And we all run. Oh, no. Matt, Matt kind of like teaches me different comps that he comes up with. I run my really ghetto comps somehow and manage to make top four. <laughs> I mention it because like, I don't know, at like crazy times of the night or even like three, four in the morning, I'm seeing like these TFT tweets from you guys. I'm thinking, what the fuck are you guys up at right now playing this TFT game? Like, Yeah, it, it was, that was back uh, before uni started. So I still had that kind of time. Now, now I usually sleep at around about uh, midnight. Yeah, I try and fall asleep about midnight. Because it's a, it's like a side game of of League of Legends, if I understand. Yeah. Which somehow has grown into its own entity. Um, I'm just seeing a lot of people play TFT, and when I saw you play it, I was like, oh, oh shit, okay. Yeah, it's it's more to do with like more strategy than anything else. And I have pretty decent strategy when it comes to fighting games. And I guess it translates okay to TFT. Obviously, having, pe uh, having people that know what they're doing, uh, telling me what's trash and what's not, and always helps. Yeah. So I can like, climb a bit faster than most people. Because um, I only started uh, at the end of February, or at the, at the end of January, I think. So not, not too long ago in retrospect so what's your um level or what's your what's your rank uh so within a month i managed to get to platinum four mostly running busted comps when spatula was a thing i usually ran ocean mage and once they took it out uh i ran six shadow as well as uh predators rangers and our oh, predators range is poison yeah just it's it's a very very it's an odd game but i i kind of enjoyed it and we kind of have our like own in jokes uh because there's like a gambling element to it so uh constantly rolling for more gold we call uh the marlo dave oh no rolling for more champions we call them marlo dave because Dave uh, usually runs Predators, and it's best to get level 3 Predators. <laughs> so in order to get your level 3 Predators, you need to constantly refresh the champion pool by spending gold. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Marlo Dave. Marlo. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you for blessing us with it. <laughs> Marlo Dave. Well, um, blessing us with that. Like... It's funny, this is the TFT community. I know a lot of the fighting game players are in their own, like, other communities and stuff. Like, there's, like, an anime movie group. Like, you're not a part of any other groups in the scene, are you? Uh, not really. I'd say the only one is probably, like... I mean, there's a Discord called Concrete Jungle, which is Dio's Discord. But it's not really, like, its own. It is its own community, and it isn't at the same time. But, because it's still fighting game related. So... Not not to the same extent as our whole TFT kind of thing. Yeah. Um, say anime FGC sort of subgroup, but not really. Yeah, like anime movie, what you know, anime movies and movie group, or um, yeah, I can't think of any other ones right now. But I know there's a few that exist. Say, maybe the Julian Julian House group. Oh, yeah, mi the Milky Bats group or the the Milky yes, Mana group, Bat. yeah, some it's yeah. That's probably the only one that I can like think of off the top of my head. So, so if yeah. you, I, I've got a few more questions for you, bro. So, if you had an army of dedicated fans, you're called Ghost Chips. What would you call your fans? The Ghost Squad, uh, the Ghost Chips crew. I don't know got any name for your for your for your squad uh, it's kind of sad but i probably call them space heads Sp <laughs> space heads okay <laughs> I, I i thought of one where it was like basic bitches oh they're but they're my bison bitches <laughs> nah definitely space heads <laughs> definitely space heads 
Yeah. Okay. Well, in a, in a previous interview, you said, and I quote, I will be completely serious. I am the best Street Fighter player in New Zealand. Yes. Yeah. That was, uh, like, you know how in reality TV shows where they kind of take separate sentences and kind of stick them together to make it sound like one complete sentence? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what happened. No, I like it. Well, if, if you had to... <laughs> that's <laughs> what actually happened. No, if, if, you could pick, if you could imagine someone saying that exact line and believing it from our scene, who do you think it would be? It would probably be Zazob, right? No, nah, not even then. I don't think Jamie would be the one to say it. Uh, hmm. That's hard. That's hard. Because, I mean, I think people still think they can beat me, which I think is the right attitude to have. Like, I think you should walk into everything thinking that you can beat the other person. Yeah. But it's hard to imagine anybody full out stating that they are the best player in New Zealand. Okay. It's hard for me to imagine that. Okay. I'm trying to think of someone saying it as like a joke, but even then. But that could, that could be anyone though. I can't picture it. <laughs> hmm, maybe... Maybe Vala? If he yeah, I can, I can actually beats, see that yeah. Beats, if if say say he like say if I get really drunk like situation <laughs> and he like wins the first of two against my bison because he like it's like trying to get me to pick bison. Then maybe as a joke you could like say it. That's the only situation that I can like comprehend. Yeah. Okay. Ah, fair enough, bro. Okay, well, if you had the chance to taunt someone in-game to disrespect, who would it be and why? Probably taunt shit. <laughs> Just pick any one of them out. Yeah, okay. If I played them, I'd taunt them. Okay, all right. Now, yeah. I know you've said you want to invest a bit more time in, in Tekken. You did mention you were, you know, you've been playing Tekken. But right now you're jumping through characters. You're using Shaheen at the moment, but you were playing Geese for a period, and it's funny because during that period you actually knocked out Dan Banter at Rambats once, and I think we were all surprised at how well your skill transitioned. Yeah, that was actually probably one of my favorite wins of last year because it, 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 it had been like a long time since I felt that sort of like not thinking I could do it. And then doing it for mm. a moment. Um, so about about geese, yes. Yeah, like, would would you want to go back to geese in Tekken? Because I I I I would personally, you were using Shaheen, but I I think geese is your 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 would be the best choice because you've even said yourself to me like the comparisons between geese and and bison, geese and bison in terms of certain moves like you just said it, it meshed better yeah it does I, I don't know it's like a rotation I think I'm gonna drop Shaheen but not for geese oh not for not for geese not for geese no the next character in the rotation is Law Law? oh what? Yeah. nah my DSS combos are actually legit I'm, I'm, I'm honest alright well I look forward to seeing them but after Law, once I'm done with him, I'm going to spin the rotation. Like, go back to the start. I'll oh. play Jack Jack's 7. Jack 7. Okay. Well, I think Jack still is a pretty decent pick. Okay. Well, name an Australian and a New Zealand player that you think will make a breakout performance this year. This year? Australian? Uh... Should I start with New Zealand? New Zealand? I'll say... I think Reno is too good to pick Reno. Uh, Reno's too good to pick Reno. Yeah, Reno's too good to pick Reno as breakout star. Uh, same with Sky, same with Jamie, same with Chopper, same with Dio. 
I'll say Dean. Oh, a Rashi. Yeah. Okay. What and why a Rashi? Uh, I think he has the. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't feel the Seth. But I think. I'm starting to feel his cami a bit more. I feel like he's more playing the character how he wants to play her and less playing the character how the character is sort of conceived okay well so, i mean best mentioned that i think it was the damage cup he almost like he had a real close set with a strong player it might have been sky or was it no, I think it actually was, was I think it was against Sky. Yeah, he had a really good set with with Sky. Yeah. And um unfortunately he couldn't close it out, but I mean he did pretty well though still. Mm. So if I had to like pick someone as like a breakout, I'd pick Dean. Okay. For Australia. I haven't been paying enough attention. Hold up. I have a I think I have a list somewhere. That's something I do quite regularly. I just make lists of things. What make list of or uh, like or uh, like just just general lists of like people's results and what what they've done and stuff? Yeah. Like I used to have a list of uh Jamie and Jambo's uh record against each other. Oh. Come off, cushions, spin of foot, rats, yeah, Um there's a player in Australia called. St- hmm, actually, no, I won't go with Stevo. I feel like Sydney knows Stevo is a good player, so I'll pick someone different. Uh, Phil's. Uh, Fraser? No. I'll pick. I'll pick AJ. AJ is a G player from Sydney. Uh, hmm, actually. Oh, no, Sydney's pretty familiar with him. But I guess New Zealand is not, so I'll mention him. So AJ is a guy I met uh, while I was over in Sydney for Gfinity. He was more of a Dudley player in Street Fighter 4, but he started getting more into Street Fighter 5 with G. Yeah. And almost as soon as he picked up the character, he started making top 3 regularly at YSB. And I think, come BAM, he'll have a pretty decent performance. Okay. A sweet bro. So I, think, so I think war. Actually, I'll, I'll say war and nets. I think Dean's gonna have a good performance. Yeah. And the spam. I think AJ is gonna have a good performance. Okay. So who is your waifu, Ghost Chips? My waifu. Oh God. Yeah. That's, uh, that's time, man. Everyone picks like. I know they all pick their mains Oscar. or they pick their. They pick like Oscar. Right? Yeah, but no, I, I mean, like, I'm generally curious as to who you yours is. You can't hate on Bison's Colgate smile. <laughs> Colgate smile. <laughs> Come on, man. Who is it? Let me pull up a a list of. Oh, you got a list characters. for that too? Oh man. No, 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 no. I don't make this. I just have to like Google them. It's a joke. I usually say Seth, but. <laughs> oh well, I guess it would count this time. Yeah. So female characters. Another oh wait fighting game characters not female characters. Uh, the other joke I usually say is uh female Terry. Female Terry. <laughs> Man. Uh... <laughs> female Terry. Uh, who's actually my favorite character? I'm taking. Um, yeah. Chicken. Nah. I'm not too into any like wild designs, so um like I know a lot of people say like Ivy Valentine. A lot of people say uh let's see, I think Mai is pretty popular. Jury I'm definitely not definitely not a not. fan of jury. Yeah. Not a fan of jury. Uh might be between uh, hmm. I 
say I do like Julia's design a lot. She'll probably be up there. Oh, uh, Sasab will be very pleased. Uh, Christy's probably up there. See Vipers probably maybe nah. I don't know. I think the suit. I say I like Michelle's outfit. So if you like put Michelle's outfit on Julia, then I think that's probably like prime. Okay, I think yeah. We, okay, I guess I could, I could, I could accept that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say that. All right. <laughs> well, thanks again, Ghost Chips, for coming on and you know giving us the info and the biz. Is there any last words or shout outs you'd like to make? <sighs> I guess I'll do shout outs to uh, Shadowing It, shout outs to my dad, my three dads, uh, Tinga Boys, YFY, and Standing Fierce. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Cool. Well, thanks very much again, guys, and we will see you again later.